Today, I'll be giving you a full tour of the Tesla app. The Tesla app is beautiful and it gives you the perfect dashboard to be able to manage your energy in your home. And if you have a car, it integrates with one swipe of a finger over to your car as well. So let's get into the app, its features, how to get the most out of it and how it all works. So if you have a Powerwall installed by Penrose Solar Centre, when we commission the system, we would already have installed your app on your phone. And usually you'll have the dashboard already set up for you. So assuming you're already here, let's go through the interface that you're looking at. This is the home page for your home. And at the top left hand side, you've got your solar production. And the top right hand side, you've got your home consumption. The bottom left, you've got your power wall, and this is up to 10 power walls can be installed on one gateway here in Australia. So at my home here, I have two power walls, and it's 44% between both power walls. The energy being exported to the grid at this moment in time is fluctuating between zero and 1.9 kilowatts. So as we click on solar production, that immediately takes us to the uh, graph for today. And when we toggle on the energy flow, this layers on top the energy consumption and the different areas of the home or vehicle that have been used by that energy. Also the grid as well. So today, for example, 6% of the energy has been consumed by my home. None has been consumed by my vehicle. 93% has been consumed by the power because it's been charging uh, all day so far. And 1% has been of the energy flow has gone to the grid. At the top of the page, we can come back to the time scale and we can view on a month, uh, month by month basis. Uh, it's early in July here, so there's not much data there. And we can look at the year as well. So here on the year time scale, we can see the energy consumption by the home vehicle power wall and grid in a really easy to understand graph right here. And this is laid out in month by month. So obviously the scale of energy also increases to megawatt hours, not kilowatt hours. And a megawatt hour is just 1000 kilowatt hours. All right, so let's go back to the home. What I love about the home page is the animations. The animations are extremely clever and beautiful. And at first it just looks like a generic animation, but it's far from it. The animations are actually telling you in real time what your energy is doing. So right now we can see that the energy from the panels is being diverted to both Powerwall and the home. And there is no animation heading to the grid because there is no export to the grid. And what's really cool as your home changes in real time from where the power is being consumed and where power is being uh, taken from, either solar or grid, the animations will reflect that in real time. So you don't even need to read graphs or read the information. You can simply see it in a split second and know exactly where the energy is traveling in your home. So if the grid was actually importing energy right now, we would see this yellow animation coming in from the grid to the gateway and then into the home. If my battery was charging from the grid, it would come in the grid to the gateway across to the power wall and charging the power wall. If, if I was charging my car from the grid, again, it would come from the grid and over to the garage door would actually open, an image of my car would appear and the, the grid uh, flow of energy would go to the car. Likewise, when I am charging from solar or charging at home, the garage door opens, the car appears, and it shows the flow of energy from the solar on the roof straight across to the electric vehicle. And the charge from solar is just one amazingly beautiful feature on getting the most out of your solar system and your power and your electric vehicle all in one simple place to manage it, the Tesla app. So going down the list on the app homepage is the energy section. Here we've got the toggles at the bottom here. So on the very left we have an icon of the home, the uh, vehicle, power wall, solar and grid. Now what each of these means is each of these are going to show you the energy flow for that day for that segment. Okay, so the home, it's going to show you uh, exactly what's being consumed, what's being produced uh, and we can layer on top the toggle here to see the energy flow. So 
there's been quite a lot of energy that was used in the morning and then not, not a great deal since I left and came to work here today. Um, the vehicle's the same. There's been no activity on the vehicle today. Um, and Powerwall has obviously just been charging um, since sort of sunrise this morning and it's still continuing to charge. The solar, this will purely show you a dashboard for your solar. And if you click on energy flow, you can see how the other elements of the home, as I mentioned earlier, compare to that data. So by toggling the energy flow off, I can just look at the solar production in yellow. If I toggle on energy flow, we can actually see everything combined together in one place. And this will take a little bit of getting used to, but once you start to understand and reference the color code guide on the left-hand side, you can see that 5% of energy, 0.8 kilowatts, by that small little blue line at the bottom there, self-consumed by my solar, which was fantastic. Um, and 92% and of the energy that's being produced today has been consumed directly to charging my power walls. 3% has gone to the grid. You might ask, why was I exporting to the grid when my power wall wasn't even fully charged yet? And that's because power walls can only charge at a five kilowatt maximum charge rate and it's the same for discharge. So the maximum power delivery is five kilowatts, the maximum charge rate is five kilowatts. So at one point I was producing above 10 kilowatts. That means that the maximum I can send to my two power walls at one time is 10 between them. Anything on top of that would have to be consumed in the house and if there's no power to consume in the house, it goes to the grid as a last resort. How you've interacted with the grid, whether you've imported or exported throughout the day, um, and it's just a really clear way uh, to summarize what you've done at the top of the screen here. I've imported 14.3 kilowatt hours overnight um, and I've exported 0.2 kilowatt hours uh, during the day so far. And again, just making sure that we're on a day time scale, we're not on a month time scale, things will look very, very different. So what's really helpful is to combine both reading the actual data at the top of the page and using that to help you interpret what the graph is actually saying. And over time, this will get more and more familiar. So back to the main page of the app, let's just go to the top of the page here. Next up is impact. So this just summarizes really simply how much of your own energy you've produced and consumed today. 48% 40, of my energy has been consumed uh, by solar. 44% power wall and 8% from the grid. And it gives us a nice percentage rating of our self-consumption or impact um, today. The settings tab allows you to view your power wall settings. So using 95% self power, this is the setting that I have it on backup reserve right now. Um, I wanna get the most out of my power wall each and every day right now, particularly in winter where I am discharging my power wall down to 5% most evenings due to um, heating. Heatings are obviously a very high demand in power. So right now I've set that up to, to 5%. If I have a feeling that um, there might be a blackout or I wanna leave a little more in reserve, then I can just come in here and bump this up to 20% uh, or any percentage that I would like. This is telling Powerwall on any given day that I am not allowing you to discharge below 20%. So I'll pop that back to 5% um, for now. And operation mode, self-powered, time-based control, these are different settings that you're gonna wanna look into together with your energy plan. Um, with your Penrose Solar Center installation, the installers will set up the best operation mode suited for you based on your circumstances. Um, but most of the time, um, using self-powered mode will actually use the most amount of your energy, reducing your bills the most that it possibly can. Time-based control, as it says here, uses stored energy to maximize savings based on your energy plan. So this is a little more complex for people who wanna play the energy market if they're on a uh, energy plan like with Amber, for example. Uh, this is more the setting that you would wanna go for, but th that is outside the scope of today's video. So back to our vehicle charging. Um, I've got charge on solar enabled, which is really, really fantastic. And I'd encourage anyone to enable this if they have an electric vehicle and Tesla wall connector at their home. Um, this is very clever. It just allows you to charge from your excess solar um, directly. You don't have to toggle the 
charge rate, it will just follow the production of solar and basically limit any export going to the grid up to your maximum charge rate on your car. Stormwatch is a really cool feature for a rainy day, so to speak, but it just allows Tesla, uh, the app, to automatically protect your home against a blackout. If it uh, detects that it's at risk of a grid outage, um, it will actually charge your Powerwalls to the max uh, from the grid. I do have this enabled. It's never actually occurred in my area, um, but why not let uh, technology work for me? The solar energy retailer plan, you can enter your details here for your energy plan. Um, and this just helps make the data more accurate in terms of its estimations and things like that. But I don't personally find it to be overly accurate. It's not representing actual savings or anything like that. At the bottom here, we've got our Wi-Fi settings. Um, this is where you can update your router if you're changing routers or reconnect to a router if you've changed a password and manage access, adding members of your family to view the app or, and you can also see your installer there as well. So that's the settings tab and at the bottom here we've got go off grid. So off grid will simulate a grid outage and your electricity should stay on but you may see some lights flicker. I've used it to test how my home will function off grid but not actually as a uh, reliance to run my home uh, day to day. Uh, at the very bottom of the page you've got support, you can browse tutorials, uh, request support, look at your owner's manual and things like that for your power wall. And what I love about the app, guys, just to finish off, is how it integrates with your car. So at one swipe of a button, uh, we can look at our car as well. So right now, I've just uh, charged my car here at work with our 100 kilowatt system right here at Penrith Solar Center. Um, and we can just view exactly what's going on with our car. We can, turn, we can access our controls, turn on our air conditioner, anything that you want your car and home and are integrated all in one place. And like I said earlier, when I'm actually at home, what's really cool is that the garage door opens, the electric vehicle appears, and the charge rate of the car shows up as a load right there on the home page of the app, which is just amazing. I absolutely love it. So I hope this tutorial has helped you understand a little bit more about the Tesla app, how it works, and how you can use this information to make better choices about consuming your own energy in your home and ultimately just get more out of your power wall and more out of your solar system. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.